Goldman Sachs Chief Economist Jan Hatias is here at Post 9 to help us better understand the number. It's always good to see you, Jan. Thank you for coming in. It's very nice to be here. Is it clean? Well, this, this print? I don't see obvious distortions that said this is a very high number relative to all other signals. So, yeah, I think it overstates the underlying trend. The household survey was also softer. So I think you have to take any monthly number with a, with a grain of salt. But the bigger takeaway is that the economy in the third quarter was very strong. GDP is probably going to show a big increase. We're at 3.7%. And the payroll numbers for the third quarter were pretty consistently strong. Not 336, but in the sort of 260, 270 range on average. Uh, the White House today said, be prepared for the job market to cool. You've written a lot about what you're calling potholes for Q4. Is, this, is it your view this may be the last strong number for well, a while? Well, uh, the pothole is really in GDP, so I think there are good reasons to think that fourth quarter GDP growth is going to be a lot weaker yeah. than third quarter, in part just because, again, there's some payback for a, a very strong number. Consumption is looking weaker. We may still get a government shutdown. We have pr uh, a hit from student loan payments. I don't think that necessarily means you know, a big weakening in the, in the labor market. I wouldn't say the unemployment rate is likely to increase significantly. But, yeah, payroll growth probably somewhat weaker than the very strong numbers we've had. So the market is now recovering. The stock market, the Nasdaq is positive. Bond yields come off the highs. And I wonder if, after getting over the initial shock of just how strong that headline jobs growth is, the fact that wages were weaker and year over year posted the biggest decline since, I think, 2021, or the biggest increase since 2021 is taken as a sign that maybe the Fed won't have to keep hiking, right? Is that that's, the right takeaway? I think that's the, the right takeaway, yes. I think if you have strength in job growth, but actually no big change in labor market slack, the unemployment rate was unchanged, and as you say, declining wage growth, that doesn't mean that we need tighter monetary policy from, from here. The broader view is also that we've generally seen rebalancing in the labor market. We've seen declining inflationary pressure despite a strong economy. That's a good thing. And, uh, and again, not a reason to run a much tighter monetary policy because it's inflation that the Fed is focused on. They don't want to create a weak economy for its own sake. They want to uh, just kill inflation. inflation. But if I'm a hawk on that committee, Jan, I mean, you could make the case the economy is going to grow 4.9% this, this quarter in Q3. We're getting jobs numbers at what seemed like full employment that are more than 300,000 jobs added. Yes, wage growth is coming down, but it is still up more than 4% from last year. Core inflation is down, but it is still near 4%. We've got more work to do. I think the answer would be, I mean, part of the answer would be that the funds rate is five and a quarter to five and a half percent. That's a pretty high level. We've seen a, you know, material tightening in financial conditions with the big increase. Why isn't it in... hurting the economy more, though? Well, because I think the economy is strung underneath also the increase in bond yields and the tightening in financial conditions is pretty recent. So I think you always want to be looking forward. There are good reasons to expect weaker growth in Q4. And tighter financial conditions probably add to that at the margin. So with the inflation numbers and the wage growth numbers, what they are, it just seems to me that there's no urgency to deliver another hike. I don't think they're going to say we're done here, but at least postpone the decision beyond the November meeting.